at North Country Assemblyman Billy Jones is with us now. Welcome. Happy New Year to you. Oh, happy New Year to you. You were there for the governor's state of the state. We'll mm -hmm. break it down in a moment, but why don't we begin with your thoughts on the governor's overall agenda for 2018? Well, it's a very aggressive agenda, and uh, he put a lot out there today. Uh, you know, so we'll go back uh, uh, and digest what he what he has said, and uh, you know, I like some of his points. Other points, you know, uh, I disagree with, um, or the lack there of mentioning a few things. But education always is a priority to me. Uh, I, I believe here in the North Country we need to fund our schools properly uh, to make sure that our kids are educated. Um, I like the fact that he mentioned the, about the opioid crisis. I think he mentioned it at least two or three times. Um, and just mentioning that, knowing that we have this serious problem here, and we do have the problem here in the North Country. And he talked about the, the, the possibility of suing the suppliers, yeah. but at the same time he talked about more treatment. As we often see with the state of the state, not a lot of specifics. Like I always say, the devil is in the details, and we'll see more about that. He will have his budget coming out in a couple of weeks and a lot of these agenda items need to be addressed in the budget as well. So um, that'll be something that we'll be going over and we'll, we'll get into more detail in a couple of weeks on that. He only mentioned the North Country briefly, touching on his $65 million proposal to tackle algae blooms in Lake George and in Lake Champlain and about a dozen other lakes across New York. Vermont and Quebec have really sounded the alarm about sure. algae blooms for several years now. Mm -hmm. Is New York kind of late getting to the table when it comes to addressing this issue? Well, I think the more and more we see the problem, we are going to address it. And the governor did mention about it. We do have some areas in uh, Lake Champlain, obviously, that are affected by it um, in my district. But overall, invasive species here in the Adirondacks and in the North Country is a huge issue that we need to get to, to get behind and get rid of, actually. Um, we need to put proper funding behind that. I, f I feel that that is a, is a big issue. The governor did tout how important tourism is to upstate New York, and he talked about the, the ski resorts and, and uh, the expansion at uh, Gore and Bel Air and at mm -hmm. Whiteface. Were you clear on whether when he's talking about uh, continuing the modernization that is he talking about what he announced a year ago and, and the expansion of the lodges and the zip line and the, and the mountain coaster or is he talking about uh, even more expansion? I, I believe he's talking about what he has proposed and expanding on those proposals uh, from the past. It sounds as if it's going to be a challenging year financially with the four and a half billion dollar deficit to start, mm -hmm. then the uncertainty over possible cuts in health care, and then the effects of the federal tax overhaul. The governor uh, calling the fact that thousands of taxpayers in the state will no longer be able to fully deduct sure. their, their state and local taxes. In his words, a federal assault on New York. Sure. Uh, he says the state may sue the federal government over that, but at the same time, he talked about looking at the possibility of using a different tax structure mm -hmm. and perhaps using a payroll tax and relying mm -hmm. less on the income tax. Uh, sure. What's been the reaction? Well, you know what, there, there really wasn't a lot of detail on that and we didn't receive a lot of detail on that and he did actually mention in his speech that he would be coming out more when, the, when he proposed his budget, coming out more uh, on that. So I am, uh, I'm very interested to see what that all encompasses. I think uh, many of us don't know right now, but of course we're interested in seeing that. I think the important uh, piece here and the important part is to provide our middle class, hardworking middle class, uh, families with uh, a, a tax reduction, and, and they, it's sorely needed right now, especially with all the effects of, of the federal tax overhaul, and we'll continue to promote that. I will say on the state level um, for middle, our middle class tax bracket, it's the lowest right now it's been in over 70 years, so I think that's an accomplishment that we can be proud of, but we need to continue to build on that. And he's talked about that. He's planning another cut this year going even yep. lower yep. for the middle class to give them a lower tax rate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Are you thinking that this is going to be a really tough budget year ahead? There's no doubt that it is. It's no secret. Whenever you're talking about several billions of dollars of, uh, of, of deficit before you even, uh, you know, get his budget, um, sure, it's going to be tough. But we need to make uh, proper and responsible decisions in this budget process. And I think we can get together and work in a bipartisan effort um, to make sure that we do. I obviously want to see the budget benefit the residents here in the North Country as much as possible, and that's what I'll be fighting for. So he talks about a middle class tax cut, but when you're already starting with a four and a half billion dollar deficit, 
at some point are you going to have to consider the possibility of, of raising somebody's taxes? And that's what I think that's what um, he's going to come out with an, another proposal on that. Like I said, we'll have to see. The devil is in the details. And uh, the proposed middle class tax cuts, I believe, were, 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 uh, were a continuation of what we're, what we're already um, in, in, on the books. No mention of any cuts to corrections in the prisons here in the North mm -hmm. Country, which I know is always a concern sure. whenever you have a state of the state or mm -hmm. budget time. Sure. Yeah. And we, you know, our, our, we rely on those jobs here in the North Country. Um, and I will stand behind uh, the people in those facilities since uh, I was a correction officer for over 20 years. I, I know what goes on in those facilities. I know firsthand. And I think the last thing we need to do is, is have a reduction in the workforce in our facilities here. Um, because we all want safe and secure prisons. We want them for the people, that, the hardworking people that work inside those facilities and the broader communities surrounding those facilities. You joined us uh, a few months ago back here in November to sure. talk about a United Way study that showed a growing number of families having a tough time getting by. Mm -hmm. About 40, nearly 50 percent of the families across New York and the North Country pretty much living paycheck to paycheck. Yes. The governor is proposing expanded free breakfast and lunch programs for schools and colleges. He didn't mention it in his State of the State mm -hmm. today, but it is one of his proposals. Did you see anything else on the horizon this session that, that looks to help the helping the, the working poor of the North Country? Obviously, the Alice Project is something that, I, that is near and dear to me, and I think we have a great coalition here in the North Country working on it, as uh, you know, as we saw a couple of months ago with your with your broadcast. Um, you know, child care was mentioned as a big issue um, to these families, these hardworking families that are working two and three jobs. Obviously, child care. There is legislation that I uh, that I've helped sponsor as well for a child care tax credit. Um, there are other areas, transportation in in the rural yeah, uh, in North Country is a yeah. huge issue for for these hardworking families, and we need to do more to address that. We simply have to do it. We can't leave these families hanging out there. One of the big issues that the governor talked about is, is a call to spend billions to fix up New York City's mass transit mm -hmm. system, its subways. Would you support that because it could ultimately win years of contracts for yeah. Bombardier and Nova bus to, to build those subway cars and, and transit sure. buses? Sure, I, I definitely support that because um, it's a major driver here in our economy in Plattsburgh and in the North Country. Um, we get to manufacture and supply those, uh, the, you know, the, the infrastructure they need um, to make that go. And uh, I'm a big supporter of that. I have been. Uh, I realize the linkage between that and, and quite frankly, that, uh, you know, that system, the MTA subway system needs a massive overhaul. But we can benefit from that right here in the North Country because we do manufacture and that creates great jobs for us here in Plattsburgh. Could it be a hard sell for lawmakers in other parts of New York? I think, I think they realize, um, I think everybody realizes there needs to be uh, a massive overhaul of that system. It's just, it's there, you can't ignore it. The governor took aim at Washington several times in his speech today. Many believe he is eyeing a presidential bid in 2020. Are there concerns that he may be a little too focused on national issues mm -hmm. and, and not paying close enough attention to what needs to be taken care of in New York? You'd have to ask the governor about his uh, ambitions uh, in the future in, in, in politics. But I will say on what's, in what's going on in Washington right now does have a lot, uh, a lot to do with what we're doing right here in New York. We can talk about health care. We can talk about several issues. Everything they do in Washington does have uh, an effect uh, on us right here in New York. So we need to be uh, keeping an eye on that and we need to react to that. So as you look ahead at your second year in office, what are, what are your priorities as you start 2018? Um, a lot of priorities. We had mentioned uh, uh, a broadband before. Uh, broadband infrastructure is a huge issue. Um, I go around uh, my, my uh, district and like I said, it's one or two of the top priorities of people, businesses, residents. We need yeah. high-speed internet to compete in a 21st century economy. Getting we better? Need, are we, we, need are we close to education. having I think we're, across we're, the North we are, um, we're getting there step by step, but we need to exhilarate it, uh, uh, obviously. And uh, we need to do more. There's no doubt about it. Uh, as far as legislation, I have a lot of legislation in that I, uh, you know, I feel will help 
residents here. We had mentioned the, uh, the opioid crisis earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I have a, a recovery bill in um, that I'll be making an announcement on soon that I think will help out in, the, in that. Um, uh, I have a domestic violence uh, bill in. Uh, uh, we're going to call it the Jamie Rose Law. Um, some, a tragedy that happened right here in my district. But as always, I say that good legislation comes from the people and it comes from my constituents and that's how I drive my legislative priorities. And tell us a little more about the domestic violence that you're... Um, it's a mandated reporting. Um, there was an incident here uh, in my district, like I said, that the family came to me um, after that. Uh, one of their, their loved one was, uh, was unfortunately murdered um, from a domestic violence uh, episode and it will, uh, it will require mandated reporting by professionals. Um, when they know of, uh, when they hear of a domestic uh, violence uh, situation. Billy Jones, thank you very much for taking the time to be with us. We well, appreciate thank it. thank you. Thank you for having me here, and uh, Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to you. Yeah.